everyone. Today we're going to learn about the compound light microscope and you're going to be using this one this semester. It is called a compound microscope because it focuses the light through two different lenses, one in the ocular and one in the objective. And then it's also called a binocular microscope because you're looking through two eyepieces when you view your specimen. We're going to start talking about the different parts of the microscope and their functions. We'll go through the focusing sequence and then we'll talk about proper microscope care as well as these are pretty sensitive and expensive instruments that are going to be used by a lot of people this semester so we want to make sure that they are taken care of. When you take a look at the microscope as a whole, you'll see it has a couple different main parts. This region at the top is referred to as the head. It contains the eyepieces. The head is connected to the bottom of the microscope via the arm. That's also what you use to carry the microscope. At the bottom here is called the base. It has the light source. Um, and then this area here where you actually put your slide is called the stage. Let's take a closer look at some of these pieces. Again, this is the head of the microscope. It contains two oculars or eyepieces. They can rotate depending on the distance between your eyes so that you can um, see your specimen correctly. Each ocular has a magnification of 10x, so this, when you just look through the ocular, the specimen is 10 times larger than it would be using your normal eye. The head can also rotate. You can turn the screw. You can just have to turn it a little bit, and then you can rotate the head from side to side, potentially show what you're looking at to one of your classmates. It's really important, though, that you tighten that screw when you're done so that the head doesn't fall off, because that can be a really expensive repair. The area directly under the head contains the objectives. These have the magnification power of the microscope. They are located on what's known as the nose piece, and it's a revolving nose piece, so you just have to turn it slightly and you can change which objective you're looking through. When you first get out your microscope, it's going to be on the smallest objective. This has a 4x magnification power and it's called scan. So with your ocular, that gives you a magnification of 40. The next largest one is 10x called low power and with your ocular it gives you a magnification of 100x. Following that is our high power objective which is 40x. So when you look at 40x with your ocular you have a magnification of 400. And lastly is the oil objective. The oil objective has a magnification of 100. So with your ocular you'll be looking at a specimen a thousand times bigger than you would see it with your naked eye. So you'll rotate through these as you focus and magnify your specimens. Directly underneath your objectives is the stage. This is the area where you're actually going to put your slide. It has a slide clip holder, which is going to be on your left. So I can use this knob to open and close it. So if I want to put a slide on, I stick it in and then I close my slide holder. Now it's stable and I can look at it. I can move the slide using these two knobs on the right. So the top knob moves that slide forward and back on the stage, and then the bottom knob moves the slide left to right. So this helps you center your specimen over the pool of light below. In the focusing sequence as well, you're going to want to move the stage up and down, and we're going to use these knobs on the left. So the bigger knob is called the course adjustment knob. It moves the stage greatly. So by turning that knob, my stage moves a lot upwards or downwards. So right now the stage is all the way down. If I rotate that knob backwards, the stage moves up. I rotate it towards me, the stage moves down. The outer knob, which is smaller, is called the fine adjustment knob, and that moves the stage just a little bit. So I'm turning that knob, but we can't really see the stage moving. You're going to use the course adjustment knob on scan, and then as you get to the higher objectives like high power and oil, you'll only use that fine focus adjustment knob. So again, the adjustment knobs move the stage up and down, and then the knobs on the right are going to move and center your slide back and forth and towards and right and left. 
I want to point out this area right underneath the stage, this black apparatus in particular is called the condenser. And what the condenser does is it focuses the light, which is coming from the light source below, which is a part of the base of the microscope. So this condenser doesn't move up and down at all, but it does have a little black dial along the front that's called the iris diaphragm. So by changing the iris diaphragm, you open and close the amount of light that's coming through. So when it's all the way to the left, I have a very small amount of light coming through. When it's all the way to the right, I have more light coming through. So it basically changes the, the aperture and how much light is coming through the light source, through the condenser, up to illuminate your slide from below. The last part of the microscope that we're going to talk about is the base. It stabilizes the microscope, it acts as a support, and it also contains the light source. You turn on the light using this switch on the side. Now the light is on, and I can change the intensity of the light by turning this knob. So when the knob is all the way towards the front of the microscope, there's basically no light coming out. And as I turn that knob away from the front of the microscope, now I have a lot of light coming up through that light source in the base. I can also change the aperture of the base by turning this. There's a little dial along the top. So when I turn it to the right, it decreases the amount of light. So now there's only a little pinhole of light coming through. And when I turn it to the left, now it's completely open and there's a great deal of light coming through illuminating my slide above. Now we're going to talk about how to focus the microscope. When you get the microscope out of the cabinet, you're going to take your dust cover off. And it should look like this, with the cord wrapped around the back, the head facing the back, your stage all the way down, and it should be on the scan objective. So you're going to unscrew the head just a little bit and rotate it around so that it's facing you. And then you're going to tighten it again so that the head doesn't fall off. You're going to take your cord and unwrap it from the back. And you're going to plug it in at your bench. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my microscope. And I'm going to take my slide, and I'm going to use my slide clip to hold it in place on the stage. I'm going to use the knobs on the side to center my specimen over the pool of light. Now, I'm going to raise my stage all the way up using the course adjustment knob. Notice I haven't even looked into my oculars yet. Now that my stage is all the way up, I'm going to look into my oculars and I'm going to focus down, moving the stage away from the objectives, and this ensures that I don't accidentally push the stage up into the objective, which would damage the objective and they'd have to get replaced. So I'm going to adjust and make sure that I can see my specimen, and then I'm going to focus down until I can see the bacteria. I'm looking at some rod bacteria here. Okay, so I can see them. Now I am not going to change anything with my stage, and I'm going to switch to low power. I'm not going to move the stage at all. I'm going to look through, and I can see them pretty well since I focused so well on scan. I might have to change my fine adjustment just slightly to clarify the image that I'm looking at. Once I have it firmly focused on low power, I'm going to switch to high power. Notice it rotates right into place using my revolving nose piece, and I haven't changed the stage at all. If you set it up correctly under scan, you shouldn't have to move your stage anymore. Okay, so again, if I'm not exactly in focus, all I'm going to do is change my with my fine focus adjustment knob, the smaller outer knob. And I can still see my rod-shaped bacteria really well. And if I want to go to oil objective, which you don't have to do for all of your slides, but I'm going to take my bottle of oil. I'm going to rotate so that I don't have any objective over and I'm going to add a 
a very, very small drop of oil to my slide. Do not need a lot of oil at all. Once I have oil on my slide, I can't use the scan low or high power objectives. Those are not made to get any oil on them and they can ruin the objectives. So I want to continue to rotate over to the oil objective. I never want to go backwards when I have oil on my slide. And it's still in focus. I don't have to make any adjustments and it's very magnified now at 100x. Now that I'm on oil, I want to make sure I don't get any oil on any other objectives. So before I do anything, when I want to take the slide off, I'm going to lower my stage down. And that way I make sure that I don't get any oil on any, any other objectives aside from the oil one. And now we're going to talk about how to clean off the microscope when you're done viewing your specimens. Hopefully you remember we just finished looking at a slide under oil. So now I'm going to clean the microscope and show you how to put it away correctly. Available in the lab is lens paper and lens cleaner. So I'm going to rip out a sheet of lens paper from the book and put a little bit of the lens cleaner on it. I want to make sure that I take the slide out of the slide holder and I'm going to wipe all of the oil off the slide. This is really important because if somebody else went to use this slide and it wasn't cleaned properly, it could potentially get oil on another microscope, which is not our goal. Okay, so I'm going to get all of the oil off. And the oil can be a little bit sticky, so feel free to be generous with your cleaning. Okay, I also want to clean off my oil objective lens. Make sure I get all of the oil off of that lens because I don't want to rotate my nose piece around and potentially get oil on the microscope in another location where we shouldn't have oil. Okay, and again, I'm being pretty generous. If there are other parts of the microscope that you need to clean, you can use the lens paper and the lens cleaner if you need to clean your stage or your eyepieces or any of the other oculars. Totally acceptable. Once you, are, you think your microscope is clean, you're going to put it away. So I'm going to make sure that I turn it off, of course. And I want to rotate my nose piece around so that it's on the scan objective. I already moved my stage all the way down, and I need to rotate the head back to where I found it, facing the back, making sure that I really secure it again with my screw. I'm going to unplug it. And I'm going to wrap the cord around the, around the cord holder in the back, making sure that it is secure. Okay, and then I'm going to put my dust cover on. And when I pick up my microscope to carry it back to the cabinet, I want to have the, the arm facing me, and I pick it up with one arm, one hand on the arm and one hand under the base. And this is the direction that you want to put it into the microscope cabinet as well, with the arm facing out so that it's really easy for the next person to take it out safely. We don't have to worry about any microscopes dropping on the ground. I hope you guys have fun using the microscopes this semester in class.